Hi everybody, welcome to DFT Fringe tutorial on the Outline Helper. So first let's start DFT Fringe. And let's load an interferogram. Now let's just make believe I hadn't already had an outline here. So now we'll outline the mirror. Now what DFT Helper is going to do for us is, uh, have you ever wondered if you had the outline in the right spot? And it's going to help you figure that out. What it's going to do is it's going to scan the outline in a direction you tell it to. If you tell it to do the X, it moves the outline back and forth this way. Tell it the Y, it moves it back and forth this way. If you tell it to increase or decrease the radius, of course, the radius goes in and out like this. So it will scan. Uh, and what it will do is move the outline however many pixels you tell it to move it and do an analysis and then step the uh, outline once again however many pixels you tell it and do another analysis and does that all automatically but to get it to work first you should set your outline to where you think it is just about right like I have here then press done and now we can go back and go to the tools and open up outline helper it's automatically set up to first try to pick the right size of the uh, radius of the outline. And so here it's set to start it, start inside at minus 20 pixels and scan it out to up to plus 20 pixels. In this case, it's been told to do it one pixel at a time. That will take a long time for this tutorial. So instead, I'm going to tell it to go by steps of five. And here we go. Press the start. In the first case, you have to ask, tell it, yes, the way front was inverted, maybe. Here you can see that it has uh, decreased the size of the radius. I can also see that it was offset some to the left when I originally did it. Here's the next step. Here it goes with the next step. We're 62% done now. While it's running here, it tells us what thing it's modifying. It's modifying the radius and made the radius plus 5 and now it's making the radius plus 10. And now we're all done. Just about. Now we're all done. So how do we look at the results? Well the best way is to go over here and show them with the statistics. And there we can see that as the outline went really low, here's what the uh, input wavefront RMS looks like. Now this, as it really got way off on the edge, it went real high, and I'm going to remove that as an outlier. And now we can see the graph expanding better, and so probably where the uh, RMS is the lowest is about where the outline uh, size should be, and so that's at, out, at the wavefront number four, and if you turn on wavefront names, here it is. It's actually at the radius of zero, and so I had set the radius just about right. But it certainly is off over more to the left. Let's try the tools again. Outline helper tell it to scan the x value, and let's set it at plus or minus the step size of two, and let it go from minus 10 to plus 10 and see what that looks like. So you see it shifted the outline over and now it's starting to, to go scan through them all. I forgot to clear out the old outlines so we'll have to do that at the end of all of this although it won't hurt to be in there. I mean, I forgot to clear out the old wavefronts that we had done by scanning the uh, radius. Just 
just about completed now. Now we're done. And if we go and look at the wave fronts it created, here's all the ones where it was scanning the radius. I'm going to remove those. And now we have it where it was just scanning the X. So let's take a look at the statistics. And I'm going to remove the outliers again. And so here is the lowest point at number four. And in that case, the X needed to go over two plus two. So if I now go back to my iGram and shift it over one, two, that's pretty much the best X position of the outline. And so I'll say done. So it'll save that. Now, of course, I would go in and do the same thing to scanning the Y. And uh, but I think you get the idea here. And so I'm not going to bother doing that. One of the other things you can do is to see what scanning the outline like that did to your 3D view. Here we can show all views. And here they are on the screen. And we can see their RMS values as, as they changed. And we can also see that when it was way over to the left, we got high bumps out over here on the edge. They eventually disappeared. All right, I think that gives you a good idea of how to use that. At least I hope it does. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.